Okay, so as we can all see, I am relatively late to the party again when it comes to Hollywood's latest attempt to kick off the 2024 Hollywood summertime blockbuster season. I mean, this ape movie has probably been out for around two weeks or so, which I guess in this day and age now has become a small feat, seeing how two weeks was pretty much the theatrical runtime of The Fall Guy and Abigail if you even heard of that movie. And while I could yap on and on about how I was celebrating some of my friends in the Amigos League special day, or how I am a Caterpillar YouTube channel, therefore I have an actual job that relies on me, believe it or not, which is pretty insane because I'm just a bloke. And I guess I would probably keep my job even if I wasn't a Caterpillar YouTube channel. But does any of that really even matter? No! Right, we're here to talk about apes. Apes that a lot of people seem to enjoy including myself and for good reason. And while there's been some narrative surrounding Disney's, this is technically a Disney product, right? I'm pretty sure. Anyway, while there's been some narratives, both positives and negatives surrounding Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, the fourth and what seems like the start of a new trilogy into the rebooted Planet of the Apes franchise, such as why is this movie a thing? Is there a story really to be told? Why is this movie about apes making so much more money than a middle-aged woman's wet dream? And is Caesar the Ape a legendary movie character? Okay, I threw in that last one for myself, but it's because I truly think it's time to start having that conversation. I mean, we're not talking Captain Jack Sparrow, Darth Vader, Scooby-Doo, or Indiana Jones levels of iconic, but I mean, Caesar has to be on the same tier list of characters such as Jack from A Nightmare Before Christmas, Rocky Balboa, Hannibal Lecter, or even Achilles from Troy. You can't really argue me otherwise. And because I care about the craft and integrity of this channel, pretty much making me an international hero, it wasn't hard to think of an actual reason that really answers all of the questions under the umbrella of the positive and negative narratives surrounding this movie. It's been a theme of my channel and an aspect of Hollywood that has thoroughly been missing for around half a decade, and one of the main reasons why the audience to studio relationship is in such a fractured state right now. It's been the name of the game for Hollywood for over a century, entertaining escapism. And that's exactly what Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes delivers to its audience. An absolutely stunning performance across the board from the incredible CGI, even though that's kind of a given, to the high intensity action sequences, the stakes that our characters face, and a vision that while some could call contrived from a director's point of view, you could literally argue that sentiment with the majority of movies that go past one or two in the franchise. And while I'm not here to completely glaze a movie that does have very obvious flaws like pretty terrible pacing problems or lack of diversity when it comes to the overall themes or messages in this franchise, I'm also not a liar that's going to tell you that I didn't thoroughly enjoy myself when I walked out of the theater and was discussing it with my boys with what we just watched on the big screen. So in order to reiterate all of the points that I made that night, let's go ahead and hop into... Okay, so you see, one of the many problems that you face as a studio, director, writer, or even an audience member at the beginning of what most would think, or I guess hope is a new trilogy, is that the decision to play it safe is more than likely the path that most are going to choose to go down. Think Star Wars The Force Awakens, Jurassic World, or even most recently this year with Kung Fu Panda 4. And well, unfortunately, or fortunately, depending on how you as an audience member feel about it, that is still the case here. And because of that, the narrative is relatively simple. Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes kicks off a couple generations after our ape messiah Caesar led his remaining apes at the end of his trilogy to a happy ending. Well, kind of. With the apes of the present day now split into separate communities or factions, all based on different beliefs, structures, and motivations, you follow our new protagonist Noah as he attempts to live his best ape life with his mates, all within the Eagle Clan that, of course, uses birds for hunting. Pretty dope. But where are the humans? Well, the reason why this movie is even a thing, and I guess the best contrivance that the studios and writers could come up with, is that the simian flu has now had the reverse effect on humans compared to the apes. Some could even say the ultimate Uno reverse card, with humans losing their ability to speak, and now having the intelligence of your average Buffalo Bills fan. And that's only if you don't escape death first. Does the movie bother to explain why some humans don't die from being exposed to the virus, or why some lose their speech, and why some lose their intelligence, and why some don't? 
No. No, it does not. Would that have been nice to have it explained? For sure. But you better sit down and enjoy these CGI apes, or they're just gonna keep shoving Ryan Gosling and Chris Pratt down our throats. Basically, the entire narrative kicks off after a chance altercation between Noah and a human, which leads to his eagle's egg being broken. With Noah being the eagle chief's son with high expectations to live up to, he ventures out to retrieve another, and before long, another group of rival apes, apparently dedicated to Caesar, attacks his village, enslaving his brother and sister apes as well as losing his father in the process. Pretty unlucky. With that, Noah sets out on his classic hero's journey to rescue his village and return them all to their home, with the aid of a human named May along the way, a human that for some reason still has her intelligence, not explained. The two find themselves along similar paths with similar goals and destinations, so they decide to help each other for the sake of their collective mission, all with the classic cliches of adventure side quests, character bondings, betrayals, past revelations, differing character motivations, and plot twists all thrown together in a two and a half hour CGI masterpiece. Now there's a lot of positives and negatives that you could really shine a light on, and while I usually don't like to start with the negatives, unfortunately this is an issue that has been a glaring and reoccurring problem with this franchise. We have a villain problem, and while yes, Koba was awesome, all my boys love Koba, you probably recognize that I failed to even mention the villain of this movie specifically, and that's because you don't really get him until halfway through the movie. And because of that, while yes, you could probably get pretty surface level motivations and ideologies that tell us the audience why he's doing the things that he's doing, it's all exactly what I just said. It's surface level at best. And while the start of this new trilogy could be going down the same path as its predecessor in the sense that the narrative and the story overall is meant to be more of a protagonist driven story, hence why I even mentioned that it's time to have a discussion on the legendary status of Caesar's character, I would just be guessing the studio's path for them, and that's not something that we as an audience would know until this trilogy is completed. So because of that, as a standalone movie now, it's not hard to say that our villain was extremely underwhelming. I mean, gore the off-screen god butcher levels of underwhelming. And that's obviously due to the terrible pacing problems that we the audience were asked to endure, which is why we had such a bloated runtime. But other than that, you're pretty much getting a classic rendition of the Planet of the Apes franchise that you know and love. Packed with characters that you genuinely care about by the end of the movie, character motivations that don't seem like they were written by a fourth grader, high octane and stunning action sequences that are on par with some of the best in the game right now, intense situations and choices that our characters have to make and live with, world building that actually seems fleshed out and believable, with shots genuinely showing the dramatic scale of what a world with a lost civilization would actually look like, and CGI that I wouldn't say rivals the Avatar franchise like I've been seeing some people compare this to, but CGI that had me more emotionally connected to the apes than I would say the majority of the 20-something new characters they've introduced in the MCU or Star Wars or even the DCEU. DCU? Whatever. Overall, as I mentioned before, Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes did exactly what I feel like the movie was made to do in the first place. They played it safe and tapped into the collective consciousness of the audience and delivers yet again another classic entry of entertaining escapism when it comes to this franchise. And while yes, we might have had some shortcomings along the way, as long as the studio has a good story to tell and a vision to be seen and shared, I guess I would say that this is a franchise that could be one of those cash grabs that I personally don't mind. So in a ranking system, or I guess you could say a grading system that is relatively new that eventually won't be new, we started this in 2024 and honestly I would say it's going pretty solid so far. I would go say watch some of those reviews even though you're just going to see where I rank all of them here, but I mean you can still just go do your boy a solid. With that being said, I'm pretty comfortable saying that Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes, while being a relatively safe movie, was still indeed an actual movie. And I guess that's the reason why it managed to stay in theaters for more than two weeks. Yo, some of these studios need to get a grip. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. And if you enjoyed, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I should say follow me on Twitter. I started a whole new account for this channel, so I'm going to start promoting that more. Again, I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe. Again, if you did enjoy, why not click on more while you're at it? Otherwise, 
That's all the words I got for you today. Bye.